Welcome to the Prepped and Polished podcast, the podcast that empowers you to take control of your education, featuring weekly interviews with influencers in the world of education, as well as tutoring tips, lessons, and updates. And now, here's your host, Alexis Avila. Welcome back to the Prepped and Polished podcast. This is your host, Alexis Avila. Go to preppedandpolished.com to if you have any tutoring needs or if you want to ask us a question or have a reaction during or after this podcast um, there's a little chat box that will open up and you can just type your your questions uh comments into that chat box uh let's get to today's guest today is jared cooney horvath will join us uh dr jared cooney horvath has a phd and masters in ed is an expert in the field of educational neuroscience He's conducted research and lectured at Harvard University, Harvard Medical School, and the University of Melbourne, Australia, over 100 schools across four continents. He's author of a book of the book that came out this month called Stop Talking, Start Influencing, 12 Insights from Brain Science to Make Your Message Stick. Uh, For another related conversation, you can check out episode 150 with Harvard graduate Jessica Yeager on how she got into Harvard and six other Ivy League schools. Um, On today's episode, Jared is going to give us his top five strategies, his top five tips, teens and adults, uh, and myself, I'll definitely use these tips, uh, that we can all use to learn faster. So uh, this is uh, one of my favorite episodes. You're going to love it. Um, And uh, let's get right to uh, our conversation. So, Jared, thanks for coming uh, on the Prepped and Polished podcast. Uh, how are you doing today? Good. Thanks so much for having me on. It's a good day. So, uh, tell our audience a, a little of your background and how you became an educational neuroscientist and an author. Yeah. So, I used to, my original career was teaching. So, teaching is still my passion. Um, but back when I was teaching, that's when the brain stuff started to become really popular. Um, and we just had, I remember people coming into our school all the time saying, you know, brain based this, brain based that. But if you asked them what they were talking about, there was no depth. So I decided, okay, if I want to solve this, I got to go back and do it myself. So spent the last 12 years now studying this stuff. And it's also, I could come back to students and say, hey, here's how the brain works. Here's how we can do a little bit better. That's awesome. Um, you re- so you, you did a TED talk. Um, it was about your brain, your life. Um, and I'm going to include that link on, in the show notes so you can watch that. What were were some of the takeaways there? So I think in this, this actually leads in really well to kind of our, our top five topics today. One of the biggest misconceptions about the brain is that somehow that thing is very active in driving us. You know, my brain is in charge and I'm just kind of along for the ride. And that's not true at all. The brain is wildly passive. It's just kind of sitting back and whatever we ask it to do, eh, it just tweaks itself and does it. So I think the big takeaway from the TED Talk and what I would say is probably our first tip for today is get your mind right. Get your story right. If you have the story that, yeah, I'm never going to be good at math, and then you study math for five hours – That information gets in, but it will never get stuck in your brain. It'll just kind of bounce right back out. But just change your story to, I can do math. All of a sudden, that five hours of study, that information starts to find a home and the brain starts to accept it. So believe it or not, your story about what you can and cannot do will dictate what the brain allows you to hold on to and what it just kicks back out and sends you back to normal with. And and is it positive affirmations? That kind of spark plug? It's it, it, it can be anything, believe it or not. So we like to say, you know, make it as positive as possible. But if you decide that your story is I'm, I'm not this or I, I'm going to negatively associate this moment with this or I'm scared of this animal, those stories work just as well. So it's, it's – okay. it can – so the, the more positive the story, probably the better. But in terms of study and learning, just make sure it's, it's – that I can do this, that I am able to learn this, that this is a possibility in my life. With the right time, effort, and work, I will become good at this skill. And to be honest, we've never seen anyone who failed anything so long as they did the right work for it. So, so long as you got that story in place, that's going to make all the rest of your study and prep so much better. 
That's awesome. Um, so what, so since we're into the tips, uh, so the first tip is, uh, get your mind right. What, what do you have for us next? What would you say? Um, the, the, the next one I, I always like to say is kind of match your context according to your outcome. So when you're learning something new, like for instance, your, your memory for these words coming out of my mouth now, not only do you take in that information, but you also take in subconsciously everything around you. So the feeling of your clothes against your skin, any smells that are in the air, any you know sounds that are coming into your ears, that all gets embedded with the new memory. And you can use those contextual cues to access that information later. So wherever you're listening to this podcast, it'll be a lot easier for you to recall the podcast later if you're in that same room. So it's just one of these kind of flukes of the brain that everything gets in and tied to new info, which means we can kind of leverage that. If you're studying for a specific test and you know where that test is going to be, my goodness, tie as much context as you can to that study. So if I had a test next Friday in a red room, I'd be doing all my study in a red room using the same cologne, using the same pencil, drinking the same drinks, just tying context directly to how I know I'm going to need to use it. But if I – conversely, if I'm trying to learn something not for a particular outcome but just generally, like basketball, I want to be good at basketball everywhere, then I'm going to practice everywhere. I'm going to mix and match my context as much as I can, practice at night, during the morning, when I'm hungry, when I'm thirsty, inside, outside. Changing up the context allows me to use that skill in a much broader way than if I just lock that context down and do it for one specific purpose. Wow, that's mind blowing. Um, now, does does is there a correlation there with just you know how how some people have like routines and they they tend to practice makes perfect kind of thing? Yep, and you and you, what you tend to see is with those routines is they become highly contextual and locked in. So okay. think about a basketball player shooting a free throw. They had they go through their ten step motion, dribble the ball, twirl it, touch their chest. That becomes so locked into their routine that if they don't do that, they typically their accuracy goes way down. So if you don't let a basketballer go through their pre-shot routine, you can they'll miss about 60% more of their shots. I mean, it's a massive drop. So just be very cognizant of the context you're studying in and match that context to how you know you want to apply that information in the future. And you'll just make it so much easier. Wow, that's a huge tip. I think I might add that to my uh, tutoring manual. <laughs> oh, I love it. Bring it on. Um, all right, so tip three. What, what are we? What are we thinking for our next one? Um, so this one I always love. It's love it or hate it. No human being in the world has ever been able to multitask. It's a hardware issue. You cannot multitask. And when you try to multitask, so jump back and forth between different things, so say study while texting or watching TV or surfing the net, every time you jump between tasks, not only do you start to go slower, so it takes a lot longer, study time increases exponentially, but your memory and accuracy tank. So you, you remember tons less and you perform a lot worse. And the worst thing is, is you don't even recognize you're doing it. Most people have no clue just how bad multitasking is. Wow. So we always say when you're studying, <clears throat> study. If you want to remember that information and actually be able to use it, focus on and study that one thing. And put the phone away, put the computer away, whatever you got to do to make sure you're only doing one thing at a time. Um. A lot of kids, I don't know if you see it over where you are, but they, they, they are on their iPhones while they study, listening to music. Um, it's, it's an issue. Um, it, see that? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, I, and the interesting thing with music is, to be fair, and there's, there's this process we call um, stochastic resonance, mm -hmm. which it's a big scientific thing, but essentially there is an argument to be made for some people – to use music while they study. Some right. people can actually focus better so long as there's noise in the background. Oh. But that only works if it's noise. So if the mm. music you're listening to is highly predictable to you, some CD you've heard a million times and you just hit play and you got it, you can use that as noise. But if your iPad's on shuffle or you're jumping back and forth between songs every couple minutes, that doesn't work anymore now you're multitasking and it doesn't it 
put it away. So if you if you know you need noise when you study, there is an argument to be made for it. Cool. Just use that noise correctly for you. And make sure you're not playing, futzing with it, jumping back and forth between songs. Pick one track and just let it rip. And use that as noise to help you focus. Once you find yourself focusing on the music, turn it off. You're done. Smart. And And I don't know if we're going to get into it, but is there like – a time that you can lock in where, where before you you start to your mind starts to waver like 15 minutes of studying or can you just go as long as you can your will can yeah oh, this is that that's great and i think that's that's a good fourth tip is okay what we tend to say is when you're doing focused study less is more so okay. if you do 25 minutes of focused study where you turn all distractions off and just go chances are you'll remember more for about six months longer than if you did five hours of study while multitasking so luckily once you lock in and focus you can do a lot less study and remember a lot more for a lot longer so we say if you're if you're just starting and you don't really like what you're studying or you're not super engaged do 25 minutes on completely focused Take five minutes off at the end of that, set your timer, and then you can text for five minutes, do what you got to do, come back, do 25 more minutes, and in those two sessions, that's plenty. You'll remember so much more from that than you will from 10 hours of studying while multitasking. And the good news is, so if you just plan on saying, cool, I'm doing 25 on, five off, 25 on, focused study, what you might find is you get into what's called flow state, where all of a sudden, you don't want to stop. You're going, you're cruising, in which case, let yourself go. If you're not exhausted and you're like, I can do another 10 minutes, go. Go for it. Wow. You'll know if you can keep pushing. And once you reach that state, man, studying and learning becomes so much easier. Wow. That's awesome. Um, tip five. What do you got? Tip five. This is the big one. If you If you remember one thing from today, please let it be this is recall is everything. So the key to a deep memory, we we took us about 20 years to figure this one out, but we always thought, okay, what leads to a deep memory? Do you have to be emotionally involved? Is it pure repetition? And it turns out it has nothing to do with how the information goes into your brain, it has everything to do with how it comes out of your brain. If you want to form a deep memory, you have to pull that information out of your brain. So think about something like a TV show, like Game of Thrones. I've watched that show once, but because I talk about it constantly, pull that information out of my brain, my memory for it is so deep. I can probably tell you everything there is to know about that show, and it's just because I keep oh. ripping that information out. So if you're studying, a lot of people worry about you know putting it back in, so they reread their notes or they reread a book chapter, just put the information back in, and that's nowhere near as good as taking it out. So instead of rereading, quiz yourself. Or instead wow. of re, re going over your notes, try and teach somebody else that information. The more you're forced to access it, recall it, pull it out yourself, the deeper it's going to get. Easier it's going to be for you to remember in the future. That's incredible. Recall. I love it. This is just the the fun brain stuff here coming 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 home to education. Yeah, and I feel like we just scratched the surface. Um, how about like a bonus tip? How about like ways to get more out of your brain i don't know anything come to your mind yeah so i'm thinking <laughs> if you okay there's another so once you're going down that recall route okay i always say if you can narratize or find the stories behind the facts what you do is you a good example of this if you think about dreaming at night when you're awake thinking back about your dreams, man, they're chaotic. There's, it's just, it's nonsense. One minute you're on top of a mountain, the next you're swimming through a lake. What the heck was going on? But when you're <laughs> asleep, I, they're just total chaos. But when you're asleep and in a dream, it makes perfect sense. Uh, of course you'd be in a lake after being on top of a mountain. Yes, of course. And that just shows the brain naturally will turn things into a cause and effect narrative. The brain's natural function is to tie moment A to moment B to moment C and make it all work. So okay. in other words, the brain's natural pattern is to tell stories, is to tell narrative. 
the more you can then find a narrative or find the stories behind the information you want to learn, the easier it becomes for your brain to hold on to and access that information later. So if you're studying something like the periodic table, which is just a bunch of individual things, it's so hard to memorize. But if you can find the story that underpins that, the patterns, why was each element discovered? What's the story behind it? How does element A link to element B? Now it becomes tons easy. Your brain, that's its natural pattern. So it'll go, oh, I can hold on to this. So if you can narratize, find the story behind the information you want to remember, trust me, you'll remember it so much easier and better. And it becomes more engaging to boot. So the brain thinks in stories. The more stories you can use, go for it. Wow. That is crazy. Um, what? Uh, tell us about your book. Um, so um, I read a little of it, and it was, it was fantastic. You're a good writer. Uh, oh, thanks, sir. It was um, the um, Get the Mind Right. Um, what's the title of your book? And, and does it come out this month, March? It's- yeah. So so the book is called Stop Talking, Start Influencing, 12 Secrets – or excuse, I think it's 12 Insights from Brain Science to Make Your Message Stick. That's right. Yeah. And the idea is, yeah, each chapter is one of these kind of principles of how learning works. The idea being that once you've got the principle, then you can apply it to your own study or your own teaching. Um, so yeah, it's it just goes through kind of these – Principles of Brain Science comes out this month, and it was originally written purely for for teachers and students. It's since once you get with a publisher, they want you to expand it. So it's now it also talks about sports practice and if you're training in say a business situation. So it's got a little bit broader, but the core is still very much if you're a teacher, if you're a student, here are twelve principles of how we learn so you can improve your practice. Fantastic, and we how do we uh buy this book and uh, it should this. be available it's yeah it's on on amazon okay. online all the websites and it should be in bookstores um this month as well in the u.s so fingers okay. crossed keep an eye out for it okay perfect and how do we uh best get in touch with you and, and work with you like interact with you yeah so i'm i'm out in australia um so, so my easiest way to get in touch with me is is through email okay. so my email is just jared dot cooney dot horvath at gmail dot com and always happy to answer any questions from anyone if you're if you're studying if you're prepping and you got a thought send it my way i'll do what i can to help okay and then also uh, any teen you know for any teens listening uh to us today any words of wisdom before they uh you know go to college young adulthood yeah i d- two bits of, of wisdom i always say so i teach a lot of of year 11 12 junior seniors out here yeah first bit of wisdom one Life is long. Life is longer than you think. Make your decisions now for what you want to do, but be okay with changing your mind later. I didn't get into brain science till I was, goodness, 28, and I would never have thought that this is where I'd land. But So just remain open. You don't have to make all your decisions now. Feel free to change. And the second thing is just recognize that you are in charge of this. The brain, the body, it's passive. It doesn't drive you, you drive it. It just responds to you. So the more you take control and recognize that you're in charge, the better all of this is going to start working for you. Perfect. Um, Jared, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on the Prep and Polish podcast. Hope to see you again. Thank you. I'm always happy to chat if you ever need anything. Perfect. And this wraps up our show today. This was episode number 208 with Jared Cooney Horvath. Episode 209 will be coming soon. It will be our next Tutoring Tips episode. Um, To access today's episode 208 and all of our podcast episodes, you can do that two ways. One, you can go to our website, preppedandpolished.com forward slash podcast. It will be there for you. Or you can go to soundcloud.com forward slash preppedandpolished. Thank you for joining us for over 200 episodes of the Prep to Polish podcast. Now go out there and take control of your education.